Oh, how's everybody doing today? All right, so today we're here with the Zotac 3080 Ti GeForce RTX. It's a big card. Um, I'm going to be putting it in the system, so I figured I'd do an unboxing before. We could take a peek at the specs. Nice looking card. This is the amp. I guess they call it the hollow, hollow black. So, anyways, um, so that's what we're going to cover today. Sorry about the pause. I was looking at something on here, but it's got some nice features. So we will be back. All right. So here we are. Back with these old tap. People come in, people contact me, and they want to buy 3070s, 3070 Ti's. But for some reason, people are afraid to get the Zotax. I, I, I don't get it. I have benchmarked them in the past. They run good. It's an NVIDIA product. It's a name that has been around for quite a while. Um, it's just something for some reason it sounds like just people are like I don't know they're afraid of it but anyways it's a great card I love it and the thing, the, I, like I said I've, I've ran them I've used one for a while and, and this card right here this thing is like this is based on the uh, the 3090 chipset um, basically it just has less RAM and I heard in the future they're going to be coming out with an increase in their RAM. So, I'm going to unbox this. We're going to take a look at the features. And then I'm building another Cooler Master NR200. I had per I, I really liked it so much I wanted to build another one for to, to sell. And it's going to be basically the same, same thing. I'm going to put a 58 in it. It's kind of a 58X. It's kind of a happy medium. Um, 16 gigs of 3600 RAM this time. Um, a one terabyte M.2. Probably use the gigabyte board. Uh, an SSD, probably a half a terabyte. Um, I do like that eight layer gigabyte Aorus Pro uh, mini ATX board. It's awesome. Um, and as well as we're going to be probably using the 850 watt Corsair. SFX power supply, but that'll be for another time. Right now, we're going to do this unboxing. Take a look at the specs. I'm sure we've all seen them before, but doesn't hurt maybe to go over them again. So, do I need a razor blade? Yeah, it does have some Zotac stuff on it. So, we're going to cut that off. Yeah, I don't exactly have, I, I've got to set my camera up a little bit further away. Um, actually, you know, let me, actually I got to take a look at that. Okay, so I had to make a couple adjustments and we're back. Anyways, I was using, I've been kind of like up in the air. I don't know how many of you have been streaming before. Um, but messing around with different settings on the camera, we I was just doing a cinematic mode in that last shot and with these cameras it does like a blurred background. Um, I still got some fine tuning to do so I went back to just a regular straight mode where it didn't, I didn't have to worry about the, uh, the blurred background so everything yeah kind of looks clear. Um, it is what it is. I, want it to be able to focus in because what happens is at this point I, it's nice and sharp where it gets locked in but over here it starts looking like it gets blurred out a little bit strange but what isn't strange these days okay so let's pull this baby open I was almost tempted to throw in a 3080 Ti in my streaming rig, but that's just way overkill. No need for it. 
I could run it on a 1650 and get a good stream. Doesn't take up a whole lot. What we got here? What we got here? Jesus. Here we go. Let's see what we have. Da -da -da. So we have basically the amp um, manual. Probably just tells you, hey, go update the drivers, and this is a video card and all that good stuff. Okay. Nice packaging, though. They did do a good job. Oh my goodness. These are some ugly. There's some ugly stuff, ain't it? The old ketchup and mustard style stuff. Well, we won't be using those. Okay. Wow, it's pretty bigger than, thicker than I thought. Okay, nothing underneath. Uh, they didn't send a DVD or nothing with it, which honestly, who cares? I don't even have a DVD player anymore. Okay, how things looking so far? Oh, I say that looks dandy. Um, no tape on the bag. Oh wow. Okay, it is a chunky, chunkier than I thought. Wow. I guess this is the 3090 frame. I did a review on a 3070 and it wasn't this thick. I can tell you all that much. Take a look at that. We have two 8 pin power connectors. We have some nice RGB lighting on it. It is a metal back plate. Looks like it has good ventilation. I like this. On the 8 pins, it has the clips facing up. Thank goodness. It looks it's so much easier to work with them up than down. EVGA flips them upside down. Okay, I want to say they look like it has three 80 millimeter fans. It could be 82, 83 um, ballpark. Zotac emblem in the middle. Zotac gaming logo on the ends of the fans. GeForce RTX very clean not a thick card i mean wide like some of the other ones but it's a chunky it's thick it has a black chrome back plate and we have one two three display ports and one hdmi Looks like it has a nice heat sink in there. Nice fins. Everything looks nice and straight. There's definitely some RGB lighting on here because it's the amp series. Oh, this is this is also another thing that's really good to see. Let's bring this in a little bit closer for you. This is what you don't see on a lot of them. This is where you get sag. They extended the, the screw holes on this, so this is, this is the reason that mo most sad, because you get a lot of flex in here. People think it's the card hanging, you know, the card goes in the board and it doesn't. This is what, what happens, and this seems very strong. So you can tell it's probably these little brackets screwed on right there. I think they probably could have came up with something to be able to cover this lip a little bit more to give it even extra reinforcement. But all in all, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, this would be RGB lighting. All right. So, as far as specs go, 
It has second gen ray tracing. It has third gen tensor cores. It's the, what do they call it? Hollow black, holo, I don't know. It has Spectre 2.0 RGB lighting. It goes off of the Ice Storm 2.0 advanced cooling. Um, basically, it, the fans spin and cool it. Right. Everybody's got their own names for it, but um, active fan control, freeze fan stop. Basically, what they're saying with freeze fan stop is when the card gets to a certain temperature and it's cool enough, just the fan stop. But, you know, the more wording, the better it looks. Um, oh, and it, yes, it, the front plate. The front plate is metal as well. I didn't even, yes, it ain't metal. What is it saying? Oh, they're talking about this, okay. Now, this is plastic. Back plate's metal. It's metal here, it's metal. Okay, I get it. Okay, so we'll put this over here, put a little angle, give you a better look there. All right. It comes with the Firestorm utility. You download it on the website. Basically, I guess that allows you to control the fans, I would think, and do a little bit of overclocking. The card is also VR ready. So it seems to be a nice little setup so far. Okay, so as far as the rest of the specifications go, we'll go over those real quick. Of course, the 3080, the 3080 Ti is basically based on the 3090. What do they call that? The 102 chip? It could be the small. I'm not sure. But, um, it has 10,240 CUDA cores. Video memory of 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X. 6X, again, we're going to go over this real quick, is double the bandwidth of DDR6 memory. Like I said, there's a program, or there's, there's something they implemented in that chipset, PAM4, which allows it to double the data rate flow of the DDR6. So the memory bandwidth you get, it's just so much faster. I have a 3080, I used to have a 3090. Um, I went down to a 3080 Ti, well I've had all kinds, but um, I find the 3080 Ti is probably just as quick, except for in my programming when I'm doing video editing. I notice the extra memory that I had with the with the 24 gig uh, the 24 gigabytes of memory I had with the 3090 was a help. I heard they're coming out with a 3090 Super or a 3090 Ti. Well, actually they are. I'm kind of curious on how much RAM that's going to have on board. Okay, so off from the memory, the memory bus speed is 348 bit with an engine clock boost of 1710 megahertz. So it's pretty quick. It, it's got the same bandwidth as a 3090. We're talking about 19 gigabits, gigabods. I forgot how they, well, I didn't forget. It just gets confusing the way they word it. You think it's gigabytes, it's not. It, it's like giga, 19 giga, gigabit, gigabits per second. <laughs> choking on my own words um, it has PCI 4.0 16x bus the display it has three displays one HDMI the displays on it are 1.4 so it will do up to 7680 by 4320 at 60 Hertz you cut that down in half you can still get 4k 4k at 120 Hertz that's nothing to snuff at. Um, pretty much uh, looking at the same settings for HDMI. It has the HDMI 2. 2.1. Ultra speed HDMI, yes, okay. Um, 
HDCP support 2.3 multi display all day long yeah you can run three monitors on this with no problem I don't know about a fourth you might have to have onboard graphics and you might have to activate that on a board to be able to run four on one card and then again there's hubs and other ways you can get around doing that but okay it says quad display so oh strange I've always heard of three with no problem I don't know about four it, it, it's required it's recommended that it has a 750 watt power supply I'm surprised they didn't put three eight pin connectors on here because normally you can get around 120 to 150 watts out of each eight pin so it's the math doesn't add up to me and I'm not an electrician so slap me silly um, yeah power input to 8 pin it takes DirectX 12 ultimate the ultimate open GL 4.0 cooling mm, we're looking at 4.6 no cooling. <laughs> I'm sorry. 4.6 open GL. Okay, ISOM 2.6, 4. 2.0. Uh, and the rest of it's basically. It's definitely. It's a. It. It says um, SLI. I. It's probably. It, it won't do SLI because it doesn't have a place to put it. But being a 3090, downsized. Yeah. It was probably needs the programming in it, but it's not there. Okay. Um, yeah, that about wraps it up. I mean, it's a good size card. We're looking at 317.8 millimeters by 131.9 millimeters by... 64.6 thick so basically 12.5 long 5.2 wide and 2.5 so it's a two and a half it's going to take three bays there's no doubt one two and it's going to cover a third <laughs> nice fans these cards right now The MSRP on these are around $1,900. I've seen them on some sites for a little bit less. I've got people that have contacted me and they're like, oh, you know, $1,300, $1,500. Jeez, you know, I can't sell you something for less than I bought it for. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. Um, they're expensive. And I got to lay that on Zotac because I know like the EVGA, 3080 Ti FTW3 is going for about 1350. Zotac is, I gotta say, maybe that's a, a reason why a lot of people shy away. I, I think they are a little bit overpriced. I think Zotac has to really reevaluate what their selling prices are. They, they, they are taking advantage of this market, hands down. And on top of that, they're not, they're not the popular company that EVGA, ASUS, and Gigabyte are. Speaking of Gigabyte, I have a beautiful 3070 Ti Gigabyte Aorus Master with the LED on the side. Um, I think I'm going to put that in a build too, but it's going to be an open, you know, it's going to be a glass-sided case. It's not going to be, uh, the Mini ATX is really out the show. They're, they're, for, they're, they're, you can, they're high horsepower and convenience because they're easy to put around, move around, tuck away. And I gotta say, the last one I built is one that's sitting back here. This is sold already. Um, wow. I'm still amazed with a case that small, the cooling that I got on that. So I'm gonna be doing the same deal with the next one that I build, but it's gonna have the 3080 in it. Um, maybe I, I don't know, can you see that?
So it's going to have a 38 in it, the, the next one. It's going to have the 58, the 16 gigs, the same thing I said. It's going to have the Gigabyte Aorus Pro Mini ITX board. And it's going to include a keyboard and a mouse. The mouse that's going to be going with it is the MM711. Nice mouse. Nice. I'm not fond of the honeycombing, but... It's nice, and I'm not quite sure about the board yet. This is a nice board. This costs a few bucks. This board. It's called a, it's, it's a it's a SK620. It's it's a 60. They call it 60% board. It's basically just for gaming. And if you have a full size gaming keyboard and you took this and you hooked it up aside, and you wanted to program this thing up like uh download all of the um uh, what do they call those things uh assigned assign it keys you you could turn this little board into like a a, a gigantic stream deck it's crazy um nice board though it's it's fully mechanical so the next one that i build i'm going to give a really good deal on it if somebody that's on my youtube contacts me and wants to buy one i will give you a price that you won't find anywhere else because the 3080s with the 58x chips 16 gigs of ram and a nice motherboard are going for big bucks are going real big i've seen them anywhere between 35 and 5,000. the only reason they're 35 is because they skimp on the memory the motherboard and the cpu i'm not skimping on any of that and I'm not looking at, I, I'll give somebody from the small amount of people that I have, but if somebody's interested, I'll build them a 3080 setup in a Cooler Master box with a 58X, 16 gigs of uh, Corsair or Crucial um, memory. I can keep it under three grand. I get some really good, you know, deals on some other parts, so I can afford to drop it a little bit. But I'm only going to do that for somebody on that's a member of um, that subscribed to my link, so my YouTube channel. Anyways, maybe I'll do a little video on that next build I'm going to do when I put this in. So that's going to about wrap it up. Here we have it. The Zotac 3080 Ti, 12 gigs DDR6. We went over the specs. You can see that's that's a chunky. That's a, that's a thick. My hand isn't small. It's not huge, but look how thick that sucker is. I'm surprised. It smell like. Let's get that nice electrical component smell. Yep. So. That's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I know it's kind of difficult to do, but a lot of people forget. I see people with five, 6,000 views, and they got like three thumbs up. I'm like, wow, I always give a thumbs up. I, I can't leave a channel without giving a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but they're going to know one way or the other. And if you do YouTube channels, believe me, up, down, sideways, no matter what, it is important. So anyways, going to wrap it up for the day. Boom! Everybody have a good one, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for stopping by.